Hey everyone, welcome back to this Developing with OpenXR tutorial series. So in this particular video, we're going to have a look at grabbing the code from the GitHub repository and as well as building it using CMake. Then we're going to have a quick bird's eye view of an OpenXR application and all the different components that goes along with it, just so that you have a little bit of a bearing on how all of the pieces for an OpenXR actually, OpenXR application actually works. Then we'll go a little bit on to switching runtimes and how to do that. And as well as a little bit of basic troubleshooting just to get you started. All right, so I guess let's get on with it. So let me just quickly create a GitHub subdirectory here since this is a new machine. And do a git LFS install. What this does is it actually initializes git LFS for the large binary files that are present in the repository, such as art assets and the pre-built binaries. So now let's just have a git clone, which will actually grab the source code. But let's not forget recurse-submodules to make sure that we grab all of the submodules that the demos are dependent on, particularly the OpenXR SDK itself. Let's just clone that. Right here. So once git clone is finished, let's just have a quick look. You can see that we've got all of the code for the different demos in here. And we've got we've also got some pre-built binaries already. Um, so if you just want to do a quick test, but the source code for the OpenXR provider library is in here. So let's just do a quick build, which will build all of the demos um, locally. First off, we'll do a mkdir build, which actually creates a build directory where all of our CMake files are going to reside. So we don't want to pull you the source code. So we'll put all CMake files in here. So do a CMake dash dash to generate all of the project files. Once that's done, you could see that we already have a solution file here, which you can open from Visual Studio to create, um, sorry, to build all of the demos as well as the OpenXR provider library. But what we will do is we'll just do a quick build of everything from CMake itself. So CMake dash dash build dot. Once the build's done, we'll just go back and have a look. So we're gonna run the first sample here, which is basically just inspecting the um, installed runtime in your system. So we'll have, let's go to bin and we should have the executable file there and let's just quickly give this a go. All right, so it will ask you to enter start. This is also where you'll attach a debugger if you actually need to attach one. All right, so you could see what we have here is the OpenXR provider just saying good day. And we've got all of the different extensions um, advertised by the by the op currently active OpenXR runtime. There'll be a couple of stuff in here that might be due to OpenXR API layers. So we've, I've got two currently installed onto my machine here. And the active tracking system at the moment is TVR OpenXR with, of course, uh, stereo for VR. So what's actually happening on the background on that simple demo that we've just run? To gain a bit of a better understanding and grounding of our environment, let's take a helicopter view of the components of the environment that we have so far. So first up, you've got the application, which is the demo that we've just run. This is where the user interfaces typically. So you've got the OpenXR runtime that handles communications with the actual OpenXR, sorry, the actual XR hardware. Other samples of applications are like Boneworks, Pavlov, and Zombieland, like just naming 
quickly three that are quite popular at the moment. You've also got Vermillion and a whole slew of others. And for the runtime, you've got of course Valve Steam VR, you've got Meta's uh, Oculus runtime, and you've got Microsoft's Windows Mixed Reality runtime. You've also got one from HTC as well as uh, Colabra from from Monado. Sorry, Monado from Colabra for Linux users. So where does OpenXR actually fit into this scenario? How does the application communicate between itself and the currently active OpenXR runtime? So we've got what we call the OpenXR loader, which resides in the application space. This is in charge of the a unified or consistent way of communicating with any of these given runtimes. So telling application telling it what to render, for example, and the runtime telling the application, for example, what inputs from the controller or from the headset that the application should know about and then act upon. So with this, um, I mentioned the OpenXR provider V2, which is um, one of the core things that we'll be discussing in this tutorial series. Where does it actually sit? So it sits in between the application and the OpenXR loader, also in the application space. So it's basically a very thin layer between the OpenXR loader and the application. So just to make it a lot easier to create OpenXR applications specifically for C++ developers. The application can optionally, of course, just directly connect to open X the OpenXR loader to call the API functions directly if, in, if they need to. All right, so that's on the application space. One thing that I haven't mentioned yet, and I did mention quickly on the demo, is the API layers. So what are API layers? OpenXR API layers basically give additional functionality to the OpenXR runtime. So they could be something like the OpenXR toolkit, which provides extra features for the compositor, for example, on rendering. You've got something from HTC as well, or other providers out there that may want to extend the abilities of the different runtimes based on their hardware. Those are typically what the API layers uh, are about. We will, of course, dig in a lot deeper into the application Anatom the anatomy of an OpenXR application, as well as the API layers and extensions. So we'll discuss all of that in detail on different videos. But for now, this is like a really high level view of how everything is interconnected. All right, so now that we've got this a little bit bearing on the environment that we've got, let's focus a little bit on the runtime so that if you do have any issues, especially if you have multiple hardware on your system and multiple runtimes installed, as well as a whole slew of different API layers at some point you could basically just quickly troubleshoot them all right so first off let's just do something simple which is to quickly change runtime so let's run the demo again quickly to have a look at the current active runtime which is steamvr openxr and we'll quickly change that to oculus let's open up oculus so under general under settings you could see OpenXR runtime and set Oculus as active. And that should quickly change the runtime. So if we rerun the application, the demo, we'll see that it should have Oculus as the now active runtime. Easy peasy, right? So what actually is going on behind the scenes? Where are all of this information coming from? So in Windows, it's in the registry. If you look at the registry under HK Local Machine, Software, Kronos, OpenXR, this is the API version, major version, which is we're still on one as of this recording. You can see the active runtime is set to Oculus OpenXR in here. So if we run SteamVR, You could see that SteamVR would ask us um, if it that it isn't the default OpenXR runtime, and we can set it as default from here. But you could also set it from the hamburger icon settings, and then go to the OpenXR tab, at least from the current beta, and just set SteamVR as the current OpenXR runtime. So now, if we do an F5 in here, that should have changed. And if we want the demo again, we should see it go back to OpenXR. So 
what are these settings here? So you can see it's basically just a JSON file that points to the um, library for the particular runtime. Because um, each runtime would have, of course, their own implementation of OpenXR to interface with the OpenXR loader of your application. So how does that look like? What does that look like? Um, for Oculus, um, you can see here, it's pretty simple. You've got a library path uh, from Steam VR. It is, of course, the same format. Um, you just have a, an extra variable here just to check um, if um, we are the Sorry, Steam VR is the current um, running runtime. And you could inspect and just check on your system if um, there's something wrong in here, if it's not signed or if it's um, if it's missing, if you have any any issues at all. If you're having really a huge issue, you could just simply delete this key here, right? And the whichever runtime is active or once you rerun the runtime like for example in steam vr they'll just repopulate that anyways if i do f5 that goes back to steam vr another source of issue sometimes would be api layers but quickly before we go to that you could see all of the different open xr runtimes that you have on your system and there are available runtimes here so you can see on my end i've got both steam vr and the oculus one sold in the system i actually also have hdc's but they don't publish doesn't look like they publish themselves in available runtimes in here so this is not exhaustive, so it depends on the OpenXR runtime if they actually add something onto a registry ent entry in here. All right, so going back on the API layer, so the same as the available runtime, it's simply just a JSON file here. So an implicit layer, meaning it actually automatically runs. So you don't have, you don't get a choice of the application whether to enable that or not. So explicit API layers. If you have one here, you, you could enable that on your on the application end or the, the runtime end as well. But for implicit layers, you're automatically enabled. So you've got, well, I've got in here installed in this machine is the OpenXR toolkit as well as HDC's, HDC spatial tracking. So let's have a look at how those JSON files actually look like. So the toolkit first, so you've got basically where the DLL is similar to the runtime CLL, the, yeah, just the name, name of it. And very important is the, this variable here, which is disable environment. So this allows you to create an environment variable, which if this actually exists, that means this um, implicit layer will actually be disabled. As an environment variable, you could specify the scope of that variable, whether it's um, process user or uh, machine wide or system wide. Right, and Vive's um, OpenXR facial tracking is in here. As you can see, if you go back in here, you can see that um, Steam VR actually has a native implementation of the eye gaze interaction. And if you see here, what the Vive OpenXR facial tracking extension actually does, which a little bit confusingly is named as by business streaming, at least on the registry entry, it actually implements uh, the same extension. So depending on how the API layer is developed, it can override the, can choose to override the native implementation. So an issue here is, for example, if, if you're running a different hardware that's not Vive's, for example, and you've got this API layer enabled by default since it's an implicit layer, then you'd be running the iGaze interaction implementation of Vive, which may not work for your particular hardware if it's not HTCs. So how do you manage that? You can basically, again, disable it using an environment variable here, or another way is via the registry in here by setting this to one. SteamVR conveniently has a feature for this. So you go to SteamVR settings, OpenXR. So if using if you're using SteamVR and have it installed, you could just click on manage OpenXR la API layers here. And let's say I want to disable Vive's OpenXR facial tracking. I just click yes, close. And then if you press F5 in here, you should see that that's set to one, which if we rerun this, you can see that we've got that, right? So now if we rerun the demo application that we've just had, 
you could see that we only have now the open XR toolkit API layer that's active. So your application can only see this and the runtime can only see that one as well. There's a quick overview of some of the different fiddly things that you've got on the registry and the OpenXR. So you have a little bit of a deeper knowledge of how those various parts work. All right. So I guess that's like quick troubleshooting and a quick overview on like a high level overview of um, OpenXR and the environment that you've got. We'll expound more on this on the architectures. It's a lot more involved, but just facing ourselves here. So for the next tutorial, I'm uh, going to do a tutorial on Android. Right now, we've only done basically PC VR. So we'll do a standalone VR, which will focus on the Quest devices. So we'll, we'll build for Android in the next video and just see how that all works. All right. Thanks for hanging in there and hope you find some value in it. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks, guys.